ยาวะรา f a ยาวะเยชูวะยาวะชัลลอม There are about seven of them, the main ones. But but this word that is so important in the Old Testament, God's name, six five two one times mentioned, now has been transposed into another language and dropped. So what happened? Uh, there, there's there's a very simple uh, explanation, and that is that Jesus has introduced us to a new concept of God and calls him Father. Or we are approaching God through the name of Jesus, therefore the name of Jesus. Supersedes the name of Yahuwah. Not incredible, not entirely correct. When the Bible was translated from from Hebrew into Greek, and and it's the Bible that Jesus quoted, which is sometimes why the quotations of Jesus are slightly different than the quotations in the Old Testament. So if you see New Testament verses quoting the Old Testament, then they're slightly different than the Old Testament. It's not that means someone tried to correct the Old Testament, but someone took the the Greek. Old Testament Septuagint, the 70 elders, it was called. The one that Jesus and the apostles used when they quoted was this translation, the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the Septuagint, and from that they took all the verses they took. And when they, the 70 elders translated the word Yahweh 6,521 times into Greek, they chose the word who knows. Good thing to think about. God's name is important. He's our dad. What's your dad's name? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's Hebrew, but I can't say it correctly. <laughs> so it's important for us to realize this concept. So when the when the 6,521 times the word Yahuwah was translated into Greek, it became translated as the word Kyrios. Now Kyrios, in the sense that we use it, means Lord, but it's not Lord as literally translated in the New Testament. You might tap on it and see what the Greek meaning Master or Lord. In the modern Greek, it's Mister. But obviously, Kyrios in the New Testament is a much higher value than Mister or Master or even Lord, with a small L or even a capital L. It is actually a translation of Yahuwah, the name of God. So when we call Jesus Lord, we're calling him Yahuwah, because Kyrios in the Greek Septuagint meant Yahweh, Yahuwah. Does that make sense now? This is so important when we call Jesus Lord that we're calling him Yahweh. We're calling him Yahuwah. We're calling him Yehovah Nissi, Yire, Rafa, Raa, etc. You got it? So this is that I don't know about you, but that kind of excites me. And when you realize the depth, and that's why it's good to dig a little deep, especially if you're teaching. Highlight those words if you've got a, that kind of word. Um, in my PC, I use uh, Esword. In my um, uh, uh, iPhone, I use um, Olive Tree. <coughs> the reason I use them is because they're free. So I got ESV Strong's on my uh, olive tree free, and I highlight any word in Greek or Hebrew, and I get the actual meaning. And as you see, um, uh, theology is actually really a beautiful thing. If you see, like, I, I took a little time to study a little deeply on this, and I, I, felt, I feel really inspired about it. And I feel tonight most of you are enlightened about it, a little bit more than... You were before because no one could say what word was chosen when we translated Yahuwah into Greek. Kyrios. So all the time when we say, and the Lord went from Nazareth to Galilee, and the disciples of the Lord, da da da, disciples of Yahuwah, not the master or not Mister, not Mister Joshua, as a correct translation of of Jesus. Uh, Yahu. Trying to get the Greek word. <laughs> trying to be impressed you, but I forgot. All right. So, now, I interestingly enough, there are times in the New Testament when this expression, Yehua, Yeshua, is actually written. And that translated into Greek is Jesus Kyrios, which means Lord Jesus in English. So, Yehua, Yeshua, in the Old Testament, it is written several times, actually means Lord Jesus. So, his name is contained in the, in the Old Testament in various places. The Lord Jesus. So it means the God of my salvation. So if you were Hebrew and, and therefore you can see when, when Paul says no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. It's very uh, much deeper than we would understand. On, on two, on, on the looking from the Hebrew perspective, if you say Jesus is Lord, you would risk the blaspheming because the, the Jews would realize if you said Jesus Kyrios, Jesus is Lord, that you are saying Jesus is Yahuwah. 
Jesus is Lord Almighty, Lord God. In the, in the, in the King James, when it says Lord God, it's Yahuwah. So when, when, Jesus, uh, when someone says Jesus is Lord, Paul is saying you can't say it lightly because if you say it from a, to a Hebrew, you're saying Jesus is Yahuwah. If you're saying it to a Roman, you're saying that Caesar's not Lord, but Jesus is Lord. There's a God above your God. He's higher than Pharaoh. He's higher than Caesar. Because Caesar was a God. You were able to worship Caesar in the Roman Empire because Caesar was proclaimed as a God. A God. They had many. So if you were a Greek or Roman, you said Jesus is Lord, Jesus Kurios, you would risk being crucified. As a Roman greeting was, Hail Caesar or Kaiser Kurios. Caesar is Lord. And then that's actually where the, where the Greeks, uh, where the uh, Germans got their Kaiser. Kaiser Wilhelm the thought, Caesar William. Caesar. They took the word from the Romans and they, so they got the power. And the, the, the uh, German people would understand that Kaiser a little bit differently than we would. We would translate the king, it actually translates as Caesar. So a lot of these words have incredible meaning. So we know Paul said, no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Because whether saying it to a Jew or a Greek or a Roman, you're risking your life saying Jesus is Lord. You would have to be prompted by the Holy Spirit to say Jesus is Lord because saying such a thing could lose you your life. And in some countries of the world, such as say certain communist countries and uh, certain Islamic countries, you could lose your life by saying Jesus is Lord. And you would have to be prompted by the Holy Spirit to take such a risk, wouldn't you? And so that's the depths of some of these things that we lose a little bit uh, without their cultural context. And you go walk up to an Aussie in the street and say, I'll give you $100 if you say these three words after me. Jesus is Lord. You'll grab the $100, say Jesus is Lord. Doesn't mean he's saved. So it's a different context to that. You understand? It's the property of the Holy Spirit that causes us to utter this life-threatening statement that Jesus is both the God of the Old Testament and superior to the Roman Empire. 